Hi, I'm Bill Osmolsky with the McIver Institute, and this is your McIver News Bulletin. The start of a new year is always a great time for reflection and resolution. I recently had the chance to sit down with Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, and he shared with me his thoughts on how things went in Wisconsin over the past year and what he thinks will be the biggest news story to come out of the state in the year ahead. The new swearing in of Governor Evers, of course, was probably the biggest political story in the Capitol. Uh, kind of divided government for the first time in almost a decade. Uh, a year ago, if you would have done this interview, I think people would have predicted that you know nothing was going to happen. It was going to be all argument, and boy, the budget's going to go until now. Well, I'm happy to report that Senator Fitzgerald, myself, our two caucuses caucused a lot, talked a lot. We enacted what I would say was a pretty conservative budget. Not a single Democrat voted for it. And then a very liberal Democrat made it worse, but certainly signed overall a conservative budget. So I think that was a big story that divided government didn't have to be like it is in Washington, where, look, I didn't vote for Governor Evers. I certainly did not want him to win the election. I hope he serves one four-year term and never another one. But he has the right to be governor for four years, right? So we have to work with him whether we like it or not. It's what I wish my friends in Washington would understand about President Trump, that, look, I know you didn't support him. I know you don't think he's legitimate. But he is the president, and you have to find a way to work together. So we didn't compromise our principles. We won't. But there are things we can work together on that don't also require us to sit in our hands and do nothing. All right, so what is going to be the biggest Wisconsin news story of 2020? the re-election of Donald Trump and that we are the state that's going to push him over the edge. You know, I, I look back and say to myself, the reason that Governor Walker was re-elected in the recall is because of the overreaction to Act 10 from the left. Um, I am certain that he would have not had a bigger margin in 2014 than 2010 had they just allowed the normal election process to occur. Six months ago, every Democrat led Donald Trump in Wisconsin, and now in public polling we see that he's either tied or leading every Democrat. Uh, I think that shows to me that people do not want this partisanship on a constant basis. Um, I think that's actually gonna indirectly help Republicans in Wisconsin. Um, we have got a great record here where we have tried to find common ground when we can. We've respected the fact that Tony Evers is the governor, even though it doesn't always seem like it's two ways where he respects the fact that we're also <laughs> in the legislature. Um, but at the same time, I am very optimistic that we're going to show people that we can get things done in divided government. And then at the end of 2020, we're going to have President Trump returning, hopefully a majority in the state Senate, and, or I'm sorry, the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House, and that we'll continue to have a good economy because nothing is more important to the state of Wisconsin than having a good, strong economy, right? That generates the revenues for us to invest in schools and in health care and in tax cuts. So we all should want a prosperous economy no matter what our political party is. The McIver Institute is dedicated to covering topics that affect free market economics and individual freedom in Wisconsin and beyond. Be sure to visit www.mciverinstitute.com for regular reports and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. For the McIver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky, and this has been your McIver News Bulletin.